This is a short introduction to ParaView, which is a three dimensional data visualization software. ParaView is a scientific data analysis and 3D visualization software. It is open sourced and licensed under BSD. ParaView is available on several platforms. It is commonly used on Linux and Mac OS. The important advantage about ParaView is that it can analyze terabytes of data by running the processing and display in parallel processes. The para in ParaView actually stands for parallel visualization capability that is needed for large data sets of scientific visualization. ParaView was developed by Kitware in association with several US national laboratories, Sandia, Los Alamos and US Army Research Laboratory. All these labs work on heavy computation of large scale data and therefore they found the need to visualize it in a convenient way. Here are some examples of ParaView being used for visualization of computational problems in science and technology. They are massive scale CFD simulations. The first is an example of a tumor cell which is red in color. In this example, immune cells which is white in color are attacking tumor cells. In this simulation, the number of cells to be displayed are about 100,000. In the second example, we see a snapshot of a simulation of red blood cells moving through an artery. The large objects are RBCs and the small dots are tracer plasma particles of the blood. In this, we can visualize several aspects simultaneously in an animated form. Apart from the particles in the fluid and the, the colored background also denotes the velocity magnitude. This is a visualization of an exploding asteroid as a resultant of crack propagation from core to the periphery. This is a visualization of water surface temperature of earth. These are all examples of visualization from the natural world. Now let us see some engineering examples. This is a flow around a fan and a nozzle showing streak lines of fluid motion. It shows the regions where the mixing is high compared to the regions where it is not. This is an IC engine showing how air enters from outside and enters the ignition chamber. Automobile industry is a major user of CFD, simulization, CFD simulations and resulting visualization. We have here flow over a fl Formula 1 car and a motorbike. The simulations show regions of high turbulence and can help the engineer design suitable ways to generate a streamlined flow. Now let us see the basic workflow of ParaView visualization. Stated in simple steps, the source data is manipulated and rendered. The source data could be a large collection of scalars, vectors or tensors. The manipulation can be extracting a subset of this data or a set of mathematical transformations. The visualization is typically 2D XY plots, contour or surface plots, 3D visualization and animation. It is useful to think of the source data going through a pipeline of processing. This is the data pipeline. At the end of the pipeline, it is rendered to a view. The three keywords to remember are what is the source data, how do we manipulate it and how do we want to render the manipulated data. 
the basic layout of the graphic user interface looks like this. The first line is the familiar menu items. It contains all the functionalities of ParaView and Display Control. Then we have the toolbar. The toolbar contains several widgets for commonly used functionalities. Next we have two panels here. The source data and its manipulation are done in these panels. It captures the current state of the data. Finally, we have the viewport where manipulated data is rendered. In terms of the workflow we mentioned earlier, the panels contain information about the source and its manipulation. The final, link, final rendering is done in the viewport. When we first encounter ParaView with so many widgets to click, it can be daunting. Here is a simple way to remember. We call the ParaView workflow of source, manipulation and rendering. The three regions shown here are the ones we will be interacting most often. To remember these regions, keep in mind three questions with respect to data. What data? How to display it? and where to display it. The top panel specifies what data, that is the source data and how it has been manipulated. The bottom panel specifies the properties of the data or how to display it. And the viewport, viewport answers the question of where to display the data. We will now see some demonstrations of visualization in ParaView. Let us take the simple example where you have a source data and you directly render it without any manipulation. Let us say we solve this equation del square t equal to 0 where t is the temperature. The solution of this equation results in a temperature profile throughout the domain. We can also obtain the heat flux by taking the gradient of temperature. Therefore, our source data contains the temperature which is a scalar and the heat flux which is a vector. Each of these fields is a function of x, y, z coordinates. Our interest is to get two renderings. The first render is of just the geometry and the second render is that of the surface temperature profile. Let us see how this is done. We select the source data here which is named flange. It is described by these parameters here and the rendering happens here. This is the default view for any geometry in ParaView. To display the surface temperature, we open a second render view port. By default, the flange display is hidden for this viewport. We enable it first. After that, we select what to display in the properties. We have here temperature and its gradients. We choose temperature. This displays the temperature in the second viewport. The first viewport displays the geometry and the second one displays the surface temperature. Note that the color represents here the temperature range from 270 to 570. To summarize, we have what, how and where. We can also look at time var variation of temperature. The data file contains temperature profile at various times. That is, t as a function of x, y, z and time t. To view this variation, we use the play button at the top. Initially, only the inner surface is at 573, which is red in color. 
and the entire outer surface is at 273 which is blue in color. To see how heat diffuses in time, we use the play button here. The time of simulation is also displayed here. When we play it again, we will see the time goes from 0 to a maximum of 100. In our second demonstration, we will see how two different manipulations of the source data before rendering. We have the same source data containing temperature and heat flux. Instead of the surface temperature, suppose we want to know the temperature distribution across a given plane. Then we extract the temperature across this plane and render it. This is a two dimensional data. We may also need to know how the temperature varies along a given line. In this case, we have to extract the line data and plot it or save it to a table. Let us see a short demo of how this is done. In this problem, we have two sources. One is a flange and other is a slab. We will be using only the flange. Opening the flange source, we see a pipeline of manipulations. The first manipulation is called a slice which takes a 3D data and gives 2D planar data. The second one takes the 3D data and extracts the line data. Let us see how the slice is specified. What you see here in, is a translucent 3D flange and a slice plane. The slice plane is specified in this panel with an origin and a normal. This will automatically extract the 3D data on the 2D plane. We have temperature and gradients here, but we have chosen to plot the temperature. So This shows the temperature across the plane. We can rotate the image to get a better view. We can confirm that this is just a plane. With the temperature distribution going from 273 which is blue and 573 which is red. We can get a quick perception of how the temperature varies from one end to the other. The second manipulation is plot over line. In plot over line, we have defined this line on this plane and extracted the temperature and flux data. What is shown here in red on the left axis is the temperature. Temperature goes from 330 up to 573 along this line. We can also plot the flux along this line on the same plot, which is shown by the green curve on the right axis. We can also extract the data as a table and save it as a spreadsheet file. To summarize, we have the source, then the properties that describe the source and manipulated data and where to display the visual render. One common mistake beginners make is to forget the connection between the two panels and the viewport. Notice that when we click on the viewport, it gets activated with a blue border. Clicking on the line chart view becomes the active viewport. Similarly, this is the active window now. When we select an active window, things in the panels also change. This means that for a given active window, there is a corresponding source and its property. When the viewport is active, there are three items in this pipeline browser that are in visible state. This is an eye icon. If it is open, it means that the data processing data corresponding to this item is displayed in the viewport. If it is closed, it means the data is hidden in the viewport. By turning the slice off, we see that it goes away from the active viewport. Or we can turn off the 3D view and bring it back again. 
Similarly, if we make this window active, we notice that all others are hidden by default. This is because we cannot display a 3D or a 2D object on a XY plot. The only thing we can enable or disable is the plot overline data. Remember that when we manipulate data or its properties, the corresponding viewport is selected. That brings us to the end of this demo. The next steps is to learn Paraview through tutorials. Download Paraview tutorials PDF from the same page where you downloaded the software. Carry out all the tutorials in chapter 2 basic usage. This is sufficient for a beginner. As you do the tutorials, you can also verify your results against the output shown in this document. Paraview Tutorial Companion. Here you will see detailed images and animations of what you must get. It has more visual details than what is available in the PDF file. To summarize, Paraview is an open source software for visualizing complex and large scientific data. There are three major steps in using Paraview. Selecting the source, manipulating it, and then finally rendering it. It is also possible to automatically display transient properties in Paraview. Thank you.